hard time understanding how a higher DP means more GPM. If you slow the water flow through the heat exchanger, the leaving water would have more time to absorb heat, resulting in a lower leaving water temperature. So we do have to be careful that we're not confusing uh, DP for deferential pressure and TD for deferential temperature. Be cautious of that. All right, and there's a lot of acronyms. That's one of the things that we need to be very mindful of. If we slow down this, the GPM, then we will end up having a higher TD because the, we can ex pull heat out of the water easier, which makes it easier to hit leaving water set point. You've experienced how difficult quality chiller training is to get. I've spent over a decade working as a chiller tech on everything from air-cooled scrolls to large-scale centrifugals in manufacturing facilities. I'm tired of seeing how hard it is to get quality training and support. So I built the resource that I always wanted. I'm offering the help you're looking for, and we can get started today for free chilleracademy.com. So getting back to the pressure side of this, there is a difference between how we rate a heat exchanger and how we rate, say, a valve or like a balancing valve. So with a valve, if we create a pressure differential across there, or a strainer is another example of this, the more differential across that component, the less flow that component is actually letting through it. Whereas with a heat exchanger, if we want more flow, we're trying to increase the deferential. More flow does reduce the temperature difference across there. So to your point, yes, if we are lowering GPM, we will make leaving water set point, or we will, we will get colder leaving water easier. And if we're raising GPM, it will be harder to achieve that. And the, the goal is to hit the correct call it sweet spot if you will the design point in the middle there because that's it that is a symptom that we can have we can in some cases force so much flow if a plant's that badly designed and like I've, I've, <laughs> I've come across them so we can force so much flow through the heat exchanger that ramping that compressor as much as we can we can't make set point properly or that we're pushing the compressor way past where we should to get there and so I've, I've i've had that where it you start having these crazy approach values and it's because we're trying to overstage the compressor in order to get the water temperature down because we have so little contact time so the water is moving so fast we have with such a high gpm through the heat exchanger that we don't have enough contact time and uh, it ends up forcing the compressor to stage up higher, which ultimately will force our saturations to drop lower, which gives us a higher approach. The difference between leaving water temperature and refrigerant saturation, specifically evaporator approach in this case. So because we have that higher approach, we're, we're allowing a higher rate of transfer, right? So the bigger the gap, the faster it's going to flow from water to refrigerant in terms of heat just to achieve leaving water set point. So that would be a high GPM flow, which is not good because then we're just putting way more stress on the machine. That's going to put more stress on our two bundles a whole bit. When we are running a low GPM, something we have to be mindful of is we could have a really good temperature difference or TD across our heat exchanger. But because we don't have enough GPM, we're not actually moving that much heat. So our, our chiller is not staging up that much. What that will also mean, though, is that the whole space, whether whatever we're cooling, if it's comfort cooling, uh, the, the building space will begin to get uncomfortable for the tenants. If it is a manufacturing process, we're going to struggle keeping up with the, the manufacturing equipment. Eventually, that entering water side is going to start to rise and increase, and we'll have even higher and higher and higher temperature differences, uh, even though we're technically at design conditions in terms of temperature difference at the chiller. And that could be a symptom of low GPM.
So if we're not moving enough flow through the heat exchanger and we're not creating enough differential pressure, we'll hit set point even though we're not actually moving that much heat just because there is so much contact time with that water. The big core concept there is getting a grasp that higher differential across the heat exchanger, you know, evaporator can enter what, either or does mean a higher GPM. Um, and that will influence our temperature differential. Those, those do have a correlation because how fast the water moves does impact how fat or how much approach is needed to achieve the rate of heat exchange that we need to be successful.